Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to the Why Bother podcast. Uh, this is episode 14. I'm Michelle. I'm Phil. <laughs> That's not what you said five seconds ago. <laughs> that is true. Guys, he's so cute. He's First of all, everyone should know that it is definitely the vodka talking. Him. Not me this time. All him. Um, actually, I'm lying. I, ha- I have some. But so, um, yeah, he... Uh, just tried doing an opening saying, um, I am Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. And all of the uh, Friends fans, which there are a lot of out there, our age and younger, you know, mm-hmm. um, would know what that means. But definitely that is not your name. Are you okay? sure? Uh-huh. Positive. I'll check on it again tomorrow, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, all right. Let's do the news, current events. Did you know that in Texas, of course it would be Texas, of course it would have to be Texas, a uh, Texas restaurant, it's called uh, Chick and Cone, I, I don't know, whatever, Texas restaurant hosts, hosts Karen Day and provides a free meal to anyone named Karen. Oh yes, I did actually hear about that. Is that crazy? Now, here's my thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's funny. It's a fucking funny story. Right. And I know where they're going with it because it's Texas, you know? So yeah. they're like, ooh, Karen's, yay, you know? Well, no, I That's, think I, but, I, I listened to an interview with the owner at some point, and he was making like it was the opposite. Like, um... You know what? Please tell me, because this is what I was hoping for. Mm-hmm. And this is what I was saying would still be a silver lining, even if they thought the other way. Um, that all the poor women out there named Karen, which everybody, so many podcasts are talking about that. Cause, and, and I know Karens, you mm-hmm. know, and they complain and they're like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, for all the women named Karen who are not like that, is that what the owner said or no? Yes. <gasps> oh, thank God. See, now I love the owner. But that is a fucking funny story, yes? Yes. I told you that the Trump campaign is now suing New Jersey mm-hmm. over uh, mail-in voting plans, which I don't see how that would be legal at all. And I told you that our governor, Phil Murphy, said, um, bring it on. Bring, yeah. bring it on. Now, if you remember, I don't remember who we said it to, but this was... Like two years ago, maybe Cory Booker said that to someone in the actual um, when they were having a I don't know a meeting of all the like they do, and then they air it. Uh huh. Do you remember him saying, "Bring it on"? No. Oh, he did. It was great. I don't remember what he said it about or who he said it to, though. Now, Cory Cory Booker is our what senator? Senator. And there's one senator? No, there's two. Two senators per state. state. One governor, obviously, Mm -hmm. and however many cities is as many mayors. Yes, but there's also the House of Representatives, and that's based on the total population of the state. Right now, there's about 435 of those. Wow. Yeah, that's something I I don't get that yet. I'm not not the brightest bulb baby, okay? Okay. That's where you come in at. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were reading, or I was reading to you the other day, something about um, how, once again, New Jersey, they want us to kill the um, this new insect. This, right. It's called the spotted, spotted lantern, lantern fly. fly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that it started, I, I mean, they say it comes from China, but who, who knows where it comes from, you know? Mm-hmm. Wherever it comes from. And you know how I feel about that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I am not, not going to commit insect genocide. I'm not doing it. So whoever's going around killing them, it's not going to be me. Okay? Okay. They can uh, 
commit mass murder on their own. Okay? Because okay. I don't do that. The only thing I kill, I, um, I let flies out, you know? Yeah. I let flies out of the house and, and I, and I, I don't literally don't hurt a fly. I save them. Yes, you do. I do. Um, but what will I kill? Parasites. Parasites. I hate them. I hate parasites because they have to, and it's not their fault they were born a parasite, but they do have to hurt others to live. So yeah, I'll, I'll kill a fucking mosquito or a tick or like that. Something that could hurt me, my family, my friends, my dog, you know, you know, you know all this. I wanted to know if, because you and I are organ donors. Yes. And blah, blah, blah. It doesn't make us any better than anyone else, but... Yes, it does. Very oh. much so. He's kidding. Please, We maybe. are better than you. <laughs> oh, my God. And don't forget it. <laughs> okay, vodka. Get only it. Kid, only kidding. Yeah, he's definitely kidding, but that was great, baby. Okay? okay. Take charge. You fucking tell them. Okay. Okay. Goddamn royal royalty up in here. If I could actually say the word, it would be better. Okay, so yes, you and I are organ donors, right? Yes. Okay, and I truly think if any if that people should be organ donors, I I just do now. Like if it has something to do with your religion and you can't like Wanda Sykes, like a clip I'm going to show you in a second. It's just really funny. So all I'm saying is that if you can. And, it, and it, you just haven't done it because you just haven't. All you do is go to motor vehicles and just tell them that you want to be an organ donor. And they mark it on your license and boom, you're an organ donor. That's how easy it is. Awesome. Cool. Roll the clip. I I'm glad some of y'all applauded when I said organ donor because I don't, I don't understand why more people are not organ donors. We all really should be organ donors. I mean, come on. What are you, why are you holding on to it? You're dead. Give it up. Let somebody else use it. Or I hope whoever gets my liver, God bless them. There ain't gonna be much left on it. <laughs> but I don't understand why people, you know, don't, don't want to give, you know. And then some people say, well, it's my religion. Now, what, what, you mean? what kind of religion is that? That's the most loving thing that you can do is to, to give somebody of yourself, to help somebody, right? And it's like, what, what you got, you, your God is kind of crazy or something? You scared, you scared when you get to heaven, your God gonna be like, where the hell are your eyes? Ain't this a bitch? You up here with empty eye sockets. Where, the, where are your eyes? You can't even see all this pretty shit I got up here for you. So, she's hilarious, yes. Yes, she is. Absolutely love her. Did you know that, I think I said something to you before the other day, because this happened like a few days ago, where it got so hot that in Death Valley, it was 130 degrees Yes. in Death Valley. Now, here's what I think of when I think of Death, Death Valley. Mm -hmm. I think of a desert in Nevada. Is that what it is? Yes. That nothing can really live in except like cactus cacti cactus and like maybe some other plants kind of rough like a cactus and nothing else can live there because of how there's no water because it's so hot it doesn't get any rain and it's you know so that's what i think yes is that correct that's correct <gasps> actually i'm not 100 percent sure it's in nevada it might be in california you know what? Or it might be in both. Both. I was just going to say, maybe it's in both. So Death Valley, 130 degrees. And they're saying that that is like the highest recorded on record so far. And also that day, it was 111, 111 in Lancaster. I know that's in PA. Mm -hmm. I don't know how hot that gets, but. That's basically the same exact temperature as here. Yeah, but, like, if I saw Lancaster temperature on TV, and then right next to it I saw Philly temperature on TV, like, I would go with the Philly temperature because we're right here, right? Yes. Okay, 
Um, so we went out to eat yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, day before. Yeah. And day before that. Yeah. <laughs> and here's my thing with that, guys. So we actually went to two different restaurants in that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was fun. It was nice. It was nice out. It was nice to get out because I am so... When it comes to this virus, guys, I am... When it comes to not the virus, I'm anxiety up morning, noon, and night. I take medicine for it. My point is that I'm proud of myself that I actually went out to eat because I haven't been leaving the house, not even to check the mailbox. So for me to do that, I'm a fucking rebel. That you are? I'm a goddamn rebel. Do you know, you probably don't because he's an English singer, James Blunt? Yes, I do. Do you? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. He contracted, and this is so funny because you just got me a huge, like you just got me a bunch of vitamins. Mm Mm-hmm. And you got me a huge bottle of, because they only had the gummies for vitamin C. So you got me a huge bottle of the gummies, which by the way, they're delicious. Um, I could eat them like candy, but I won't. Um, so do you remember when I said to you, when you got them for me and I said, so all them sailors back when that got scurvy because there was no vitamin C, if they would have just, if these gummies existed then, or even vitamin C pills, if they would have taken a pill or or even fruit, (laughs) well, yeah, but the fruit fruit would have existed, obviously, but it wasn't on the, yes, that's That's exactly why they got scurvy. Exactly. So that's why I'm saying like, if they had, because the fruit would have went bad, you can't eat bad fruit. It took forever wherever they were sailing. You know what I mean? They Mm -hmm. didn't have trains and planes and all that fucking good stuff. So anyway, if they would have just taken vitamin C, if it existed back then and they knew, you know, um, then they would, scurvy would not have killed them all, right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, James Blunt, I can't believe you know who he is. Why is that? Because he's an English singer. Yeah. What, so, uh, Pink Floyd's one of my favorite bands. What do you, what do you think they are? The Rolling Stones. The Beatles. The Beatles, I did know. The Rolling Stones and Pink Floyd, I did not know. Yeah. They're, they're English. They're all English. And about 10,000 other great bands. Yes. 10,000. That's a lot. Yes. That's a, that's a lot of bands. I don't. I couldn't name 10,000 bands, period. Let well, I, I am being hyperbolic. But... I know. I know. And I'm being a bitch. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, yeah, he contra. It's just funny that I was just talking to you about that, and then I saw the very next day on my phone. That's why I swear our phones hear us, okay? Okay. That, um... James Blunt contracted uh, scurvy after only eating meat for two months straight, like just straight, just meat for two whole months, excuse me, in a row, Um, straight, just to spite vegan women at University of Bristol and faced some major health consequences. He did it out of spite Mm -hmm. to fuck with vegan people, like... That's one thing I don't I don't understand. Like, I, I don't think that vegan people should. Uh, I don't know. That's it's really hard for me. I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. But I absolutely love animals. But I I don't eat red meat. That is and true. And I don't eat pork. Yes. I eat poultry and like two different seafoods, and that's all the meat I eat. Because of animals, I gave it up six and a half years ago. Yeah. Never went back. And I'm still trying to become vegetarian, um, fully. But anyway, I I just thought that that was, but what a jerk off doing it to spite them. Now I'm glad he didn't die, but good on you. Ha ha. You know, don't do that just to, cause they're, my thing is that vegan people, they're not, they're doing it for a life. They're not doing it as an asshole. Mm -hmm. They're doing it to save a life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is very important. So. Okay, um, aw, here's a cute little story. A 150-pound tortoise named Solomon 
is back home after 74 days on the lam. <laughs> he escaped his home in Ashland, Tennessee on June 8th, my birthday, by the way. Shout out, Geminis. Um, and roamed around for, again, 74 days. The owner, Lynn Cole, has had Solomon since he was just a hatchling the size of a ping pong ball. He's now, you all right, Buck? He's making all kinds of noises over here. He sounds like a piggy. <laughs> Solomon is 15 years old now, right? Uh-huh. And 36 inches long and still growing. They can live to be 100 years old, so he's got a long ways to go. But apparently he took a little vacation for 74 days. It, they said he didn't go too far. I mean, he's a giant 150-pound tortoise. How far can he get, you know? Yeah. But how cute is that? And it showed a picture, and I'm like, oh, I'm in love. I am in love with Solomon. Sorry, babe, I'm leaving you for Solomon. Okay? Okay, baby. Mm -hmm. We'll go with that, okay? Okay. I wanted to play uh, a little clip of just this. Lady Gaga is awesome. Now, you like some of her stuff or no? Well, on occasion, yes. A rare occasion. Yeah, very rare, depending on your mood. Depending on my mood, yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of things depend on your mood, huh? Yes. Okay. A lot of things depend on my mood, too. Yeah. I don't take your shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so anyway. Um, yes, Lady Gaga, when she was on the... Um, she's got such an amazing voice. And when she was on the car... car Carpool Karaoke with, um, what's his name? James Corden. Yeah, that guy. He's English. Yeah, I think he might be Scottish. Mm -mm. Maybe. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He's English. Okay. And his dad plays... Uh, the skin flute? <laughs> I'm telling him you said that. Oh, God, no. They're not all like you, okay? Okay. Calm down. You're giving me a million reasons to let you go. You're giving me a million reasons to quit the show. You're giving me a million reasons. Give me a million reasons. Giving me a million reasons. About a million reasons. If I had a highway, I would run for the hills. If you could find a driveway, I'd forever be still. But you're giving me a million reasons. Give me a million reasons. Giving me a million reasons. About a million reasons. I bow down to pray. I try to make the worst seem better. Lord, show me the way to cut through all this worn out leather. I've got a hundred million reasons to walk away. But baby, I just need one good one to stay. How amazing is her voice? And She's okay. Oh, jeez. And you would think that, like, uh, that sometimes, like, when they're singing on their own, they don't sound as good if they're, you know? Yeah, because everybody uses auto-tune. Well, yeah, but... And who knows, that might be auto-tune. That is not auto-tune. It very well could be. She's amazing. Stop talking about her. You be nice, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, now, I don't know. No, no. Maybe. I mean, yeah, it could be. Do I think it is, though? I don't think so. Okay? Okay. Got your back, Gaga. So, do you remember me telling you about that uh, flagrant podcast with Andrew Schultz? Yes. Okay, I was watching it again the other day, and they were talking about, well, they talk about a lot of shit, and they go off on tangents and shit, kind of like we do, but to the extreme, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's, like, I'm interested in most of them. Um, anyway, they were talking about 
how it's selfish to not have kids. So I was surprised to hear that for one. Yeah. I disagree with that statement entirely. So do I. And and Ricky Gervais, once again I bring up his name, can't help it. He did a bit a bit about that too, but in the opposite way. Mm-hmm. He's like as opposed to he's like it's weird because people go up to him all the time because he's like fifty now, fifty mm-hmm. early fifties. And they're like, Why don't you have kids? Like it's weird and he's like he says that um I'm surprised to hear people say that it's weird to ask someone, I, I don't know, why they don't have kids as opposed to why, why they do, have do kids. you have kids, right? So I completely disagree with that statement as well, and they're just out of their goddamn minds, I think. Yeah, I don't really care for that show anyway. I, I mean, I, I would have... If I had listened, if that what, had existed... What, Flagrant Podcast? You yes. never listened to that, did you? You've showed me it. No, yeah. I showed you Andrew Schultz doing his separate thing. That's totally different. Okay, well... That's totally different. That thing that you showed me, I, I don't know. Now, care. them I love. I love when he does them. It's like news update thing mm. that he puts together. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I think that's genius. He, he does a great job with them, yeah, and I, I love I them. I don't care for it. I mean, it, nothing against him. If I was in my 20s, I probably would have loved it. The bombastic delivery and the kind of uh, in-your-face type of uh, aggregation journalism there. I, I would have loved it in my 20s. But in my 40s, and just like, uh, yeah, I've heard that before for one. And for two, I'm, I, it just moves too fast and it's too punchy and that sort of stuff for me at this point. To in your face? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I like the things that I've showed you, mm-hmm. which is totally different. And if you don't like that, do not watch the podcast. Not that you would, because you ain't gonna like that at all. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. So here's something I wanted to talk about. Um, the How the Golden State Killer Uh-huh. Um, his real name is Joseph D'Angelo. Uh-huh. He's 74 years old. You know he was caught, obviously. Yeah. Well, he just got a guilty plea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, obviously. Right. Um, With no chance of parole. Well, and he's 73. So. 74. Okay. He um He's also a former police officer. Did you know that? No. Uh-huh. So he apologized today. To his victims. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, right? Now, keep in mind. (laughs) How many people did he kill? 13 murders, more than 50 rapes. I'm sorry, I raped and murdered all And then called them and tortured them by saying, I'm going to come kill you. The ones he didn't kill, the ones he just raped and stuff, Uh he would call them and leave messages on their phones saying, I'm going to. And, you know, just torture. Yeah. Absolute fucking torture. And so what I wanted to talk to you about is, because you know a little more about it than I do, Patton Oswalt, the comedian. Uh-huh. His, uh, his wife, his, his, he's got another wife now. Yes, he, he was widowed. He, his wife died uh, of a drug overdose, actually. That was only, like, two, three years ago? Yes. Her name was Michelle McNamara, and she was writing, she was like an amateur, well, semi-amateur, I guess. You can't really be amateur when you're that deep into it. Yeah, she uh, was, she put a lot of time, her whole life was yes. about finding this Golden State Killer. Yeah, and she had, she had, at the time of her death, she had a book that was like 75% completed, probably more than that. And it was like right. She died like maybe two or three months before they caught the guy. That finally. is, that is so sad. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the, them them catching him didn't have anything to do with her. They they wound up, uh, if I remember correctly, they got DNA evidence from uh, twenty three me or something yeah, from, from a, a, a publicly a family member. Yeah, but she was writing a book on it, and uh, Patton finished it. Or had it finished. Did he finish it? I was going to ask you. Yeah, somebody finished. He had it finished. 
Is it um, published? It's published. It's it's out. Uh, you know what? I think I would like to read that only because I know that most of it is in her or her mm-hmm. words, mm-hmm. her writing, her her point of view, her you know. Yeah. And um and now she's gone. Yeah. And I think that I would enjoy reading it more the fact that she wrote it mm-hmm. and now and everything she put into it and then how they caught him after she passed away. Yeah. Right after. And she never got a chance to. So I think I'd rather read it for that reason. Because mm-hmm. I already know the, you know, the storyline, basically. Right. And I don't, I don't care. You know, like, I feel bad, obviously, for all the victims and stuff. But, I mean, I already know that part of the story. Midnight, stop stealing cat treats. Our dog's going to start meowing. So I, like, really, I, I want to read her book. It's interesting. Well, do you want to read the actual book or book on tape or ebook? Or... Uh, you know what? That's a good question, but I think I think I would rather the physical copy actually. For some reason, and I'm I don't know. For some reason holding holding it in my hands and reading like her actual words, which I know it's going to be her actual words on the other stuff you said. Blah, blah. But it just, it just seems like she put so much effort into it, which she did. It was so much of her life. It consumed so much of her mind, you know, mm-hmm. um, that, um, the effort that she put into it, I think I should take the effort. It would just feel more, I don't know, respectable, I guess. And plus I would think I would just get more, out of reading the actual physical book. Uh-huh. I don't know. But it's um it's a shame how she um passed away. I think the what's the last book you said you wanted? Capote? Yeah. Did you did you did I get you that? Did you get yes, it? Yes you did. You mm-hmm. got me the physical book. That did was I really? Of, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I uh, I mainly uh, listen to audio books now, but uh, yeah, the you got me the physical book and I read that. Uh oh, I was just gonna say, did you read it? Yes. When? A while ago. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm pretty cool, ain't I? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Capote. Um. That was a uh, Philip Seymour. Actually, Hoffman. yeah. The the name of that book actually the the it, it's in cold blood. Okay. The movie Capote is about the making of In Cold Blood, essentially. And yeah. I saw In Cold Blood. Obviously, yeah. I didn't read the book, Capote. Right. But I did see... Well, no, that you're getting it reversed. <clears throat> the movie's Capote, the book is In Cold Blood. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what he said. So, okay, I got you now. But, yeah, okay, so I watched the movie, which is Capote. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I did watch that. I watched it with you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And that, it's weird because now we're talking about Capote, which is the last book I remember you said you wanted. I honestly swear I do not, I remember like that I wanted to get it for you. Uh-huh. I, and I know, I'm sure I went to Barnes and Noble because that's where I would have went. Mm-hmm. But, um... I did not know I actually did get it for you. And you I definitely it. did not know that you read it. Yep. Wow. So much I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, but what I was saying is it's weird because Capote, well, Philip Seymour Hoffman, the man, the actual Philip Seymour Hoffman actor, he died of an accidental o- overdose, just like Patton Oswald's, you know, wid- now widowed wife. Well, she's a she's the widow, right? No, she's no. the widowee. <laughs> I don't know how you say it, but you know what I mean. He's a widower. Yes, of her because you know what I mean. Yes. So anyway, she died the same way. It yes. was an accidental overdose, so she didn't want to die. Yeah. And they and they have a little girl too, but he's remarried and um, he's happy. Yeah. But he still does talk about her. Yeah. Like occasionally on some of the um, stand ups that he does, right? Yes. I mean, that's the mother of his little girl, and he loved her, and that was so unexpected, I'm sure, Yeah, for him. But he's um he's good stand-up. He's a good stand-up. This is going to be a hell of a segue, because I don't have a segue from murder, you know, to um, something funny. 
Well, it's it's about the emergency room, so they uh, kind of fit together. You know what? Thank you. You just saved me. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a clip from Brian Regan, another stand-up, who um, I just figured I'd, again, end with something either cute or funny. I really try to not end on a bad note. But, um, so yeah, this clip is funny. Nurse finally comes in. How are you doing tonight? I'm on a gurney. You have a painkiller or something? This is killing me. So she goes, how would you describe your pain? It's killing me. I don't know if you remember that part. Um, ouch. What, are we playing that pyramid game? Um, excruciating. Horrific. Uh, would rather have shards of glass in my eyes. How do I convey this to you? So she asks, how would you rate your pain? Four stars. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. She goes, how would you rate it on a scale of one to ten, with ten being the worst? Well. You know, saying a low number isn't going to help you. Oh, I'm a two. Maybe the high ones. And you could get me a baby aspirin and cut it in half. And maybe a Flintstone vitamin and I'll be out of your hair. You can go ten to all the threes and fours and such. If anyone's saying such ridiculous numbers. Okay. Um, he's great. <laughs> he is great. Uh, la, la, la. The number, if you guys want to text us, um, call, the phone number is 856-882-9670. And, um, text us pictures of your genitals, people. Oh, God. Please say you're kidding. I'm kidding. No, you're not. He's so not kidding. Text, text us. Okay. We're getting canceled. No, seriously, don't text us pictures of your genitals. That that wouldn't be a good idea. No, no. I'm gonna second that. Actually, okay. Not a good idea. You can send pictures, pictures of your dogs if you have dogs. I'm in love with doggies. Okay, so um, give them the email. It's why dot bother dot pod at gmail dot com. The Y is a letter, people. The Y, the Y is a letter. Okay, guys. Um, we'll talk to you uh, Wednesday night, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, guys. Love you guys. Have a good one. Stay safe, and please tune in Wednesday night. Late. It's actually really late Wednesday night. We do it. We air these late Sunday night and Wednesday night. Okay. Shut me up. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Bye.